I'm just, you know, I was at the meeting the other night with um, um, some of our community leaders, um, and not the usual community leaders, not the people that you see at all the meetings. There were some different people there, and um, they were talking about some of the work that they had did um, with some of the, the, the gang members or in different places like Orchard Park and Mission Hill and things like that. And they talked about, um, they talked a little bit about the Boston Miracle. And um, Senator Wilkinson was there and she had um, talked about a meeting that she was calling for with the mothers. She called it um, Mothers in November, Mother's Day in November. Okay. And so she invited um, a lot of people to come to this meeting that she's having this evening at 6 p.m at the um, DCR on Martin Luther King Boulevard. And so I thought, you know, we all know that Senator Wilkinson is well versed and she knows a lot. She's very, she, she, she's very intelligent and she knows her stuff. And so I wanted, I invited her to come on today so that we can talk about this meeting. Um, you know, what, what, is she, what is she, you know, what are her thoughts? What is she planning? Um, I know she reached out to Tina Cherry. I know Tina Cherry reached out back out to her. And, um, and it's time for us to come together. Um, we, you, as you know, Pastor, last week, I believe it was, we were here at, on the air, and Grace Richardson called us and asked us to come down to the hospital because her son was, had been shot um, the same day as the, uh, as the Ashmont fire. And they buried her son on Tuesday. I went to the, to the wait to pay my respects. And it's just really, really sad that our children are out here killing each other, um, being killed. And it's like, it's, it's not a whole lot of things going on. No one's really in the uproar about it, you know? Um, the Peace Institute, I don't, I don't, I give Tina Cherry a lot of credit for the work that she's doing. Because I know every time she hears that some child has been shot or killed, she know that she's her her phone is gonna be ringing soon, you know. And I rang and I rang her phone exactly on that last one. Right, right. And so um, it's just you know she's been advocating and and for this ever since she lost her son. And so a lot of our parents are losing their children to this violence, and it seems like nobody has an answer. But we have to come up with an answer ourselves. We have to, we have to um, work together. We have to come up with some solutions. We we always um, complaining and moaning and groaning, but there are some things that we can do. And one of the things that we can do is we can go to the polls on September 26 and vote. That's one of the things that we can do. And we need to send a message to City Hall that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And how do we do that? We vote those people out who are not working for us. And I heard, um, and I have, a, I, I have an idea, and I'm not going to say it on the air, but I, I, I heard something this morning when I was coming in, and um, I'm going I'm, I'm to talk to some folks and see if we can come up with a strategy. Why are you taking me out the air, Pastor? <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna, I, I have an idea that I'm going to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about it on the air because I don't want um, people to get wind of it. But I have a really great idea, and I think that it, 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 it can work. Eh, oh, here comes my guest with her one leg. God bless her. <laughs> did she, did she? She, she has one leg, and she pressed her she, way. God bless her. Did she have one leg at the meeting? Yes, she did. Oh. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah. I, so what did you do? You took me off here? You, no, you are. Oh, okay, okay. So um, right here. Well, you must have been thinking alike, huh? Our colors. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Thank you. My husband bought this for me. <laughs> he bought it for me a couple years ago. I couldn't wear it. I must have lost some weight. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Pastor, how are you? I'm doing very, very well. Very, very well. You and look like it, but I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting on your mic because you're live. We're live right now. 
And so your mic is now on. And again, this is Pastor Bruce Wall, and this is the BG Report. And you're listening to us on WBPG LP 102.9 FM radio. But we're also on 24 other different outlets all, o- all over the city, around the country, and all over the world. So let's, let's, let's uh, give the broadcast back to uh, Minister Priscilla, and she'll just introduce her guests and, and move us forward. All right. Thank you, Pastor. So we are on the air today with none other than Senator Diane Wilkerson. And we are talking about some of the things that's going on in our community. And Senator Diane has called together a meeting with the mothers. She called it no Mother's in Mo- Nov- Mother's Day in November? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though it's July, right? Well, no, that was the first time I suggested it. So it wasn't th- it wasn't new. So oh, now we okay. can say Mother's Day in July. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. But she is here to talk about this meeting that she's having. We was at a, a community meeting the other night um, at Mamlio. And um, I, when I came in, um, you were just ending. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really get a chance to hear everything that you said. But I thought it would be a good idea for you to come in and talk. Because a lot of people are listening to Boston Praise Radio in the mornings. And um, I don't know if you saw Council Yancey. He just left. Yes. He said to give you his regards. He, he, yeah. he opened the door and helped me get down Oh, the okay. <laughs> okay. And so, Senator, this idea, and I know because, um, as you know, I, I'm a founding member of Mother Suggestions and Equality. So is my sister Sarah. Um, we we still support that vision, although we no longer work with them. But you know, at the time that it was um, created, it was a great idea where the mothers got together, exactly. and that's what it, I believe. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take that and more. And I, I want to say at the outset that the um, the importance of having a vehicle and the medium for community to get information Mm -hmm. is just so critical, cannot be understated. So first, before anything, I thank God, and I thank you for the invitation to come Mm -hmm. because one of the things I think you saw the other night, our folks want information. They're hungry for information, for facts. Right, right. And we get chastised so much for not doing something. How come people are not doing? Most folks just looking for some direction of what to do. Exactly. They, Marching orders. They, you know, not everybody is going to be leading it, but the, there's so many people who have responded even in this last week. Mm-hmm. What what can I do? What, oh, this is a wonderful idea. And it's really quite simple. Mm-hmm. It really is quite simple. And you said Mother's Day in November. That's because that's the, uh, the first time I suggested this mm-hmm. was... 2015 and we had been through the same thing this mm-hmm. kind of a spate mm-hmm. of of violence that just rocked people yeah and yeah. you know the interesting thing is we've done this before we mm-hmm. did it in um, say 96 we did it in 2000 we had a citywide we had a mother's prayer uh event at the um uh, copley church mm-hmm. and p- mothers from all over the city mm-hmm. but but this is really about us right when i say right. us i mean the mamas and i you know yeah. and the, the 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 flyer says the mama's meeting because people <laughs> get that right the mama's meeting right and right. a couple of things i'd say about about that priscilla and i know you we we all we see it every day first and foremost mm-hmm. mothers know right right they do so this whole n- need to get together and shut the door no mm-hmm. press and yep. just have a conversation i told people i welcome them Come, 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 uh, come dress comfortably. Mm-hmm. For all I know, we might end up sitting on the floor. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we mm-hmm. really, it, but this is, this is um, uh, the culmination of a lot of, I say tears, mm-hmm. a lot of energy, a lot of questions and challenges from conversations on every corner across our community. Yeah. You know, whether we like it or not, 80% of the families in Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan are headed by single women heads of household. That's right. That's the truth. That's a fact. That's the truth. You, you, That's a fact. You ain't lied, never lied there. So, so <clears throat> if, an, if someone's interested in trying to get to some remedy of what to do about the violence and what the kids are doing, what better place to start than with the, with the person, the yep. adult who is primarily responsible, even if they don't know what they're doing. Right, right. For for their for their for their pe- for their birth for their uh, uh, existence every day. Right. We may not spend more time with our kids because they're in school. The school right. has them more often than we do. But what happens is that when we do have these spates and the violence and what we've seen, this response in the city of Boston, and I would say, uh, what I'm, from what I hear from people, 
across the country has become so routine. And finally, we said, n no more. This right. is, this is, this stop. Just stop. Enough is uh, enough. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Here's what happens. We have a violent episode. The, the, the energy and the direction comes from City Hall. Mm -hmm. So either the mayor calls a press conference mm -hmm. or the police commissioner calls a press conference. Right. You look up, there's going to be two or three mm -hmm. um, uh, black ministers. Yep. Usually not necessarily the ones with the credibility. Right. I'm going to say it. Right. We have to. That's the one thing we have to, you know, we have to tell the truth. You know, right? tell the truth, shame the devil. The, the, the police commissioner is going to be there mm -hmm. and the district attorney is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Most to me, the most inappropriate thing of all, because if they're supposed to be the independent body, how they stand in there, right, you know, the right. day somebody is killed and, 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 and have an opinion. Right. It's just ridiculous, but, you know, so much for that. We have a special kind of district attorney in Suffolk County. <laughs> yes. um, that's, you save that for another show. You're right. So, <laughs> so, so, and then they all come to the podium and talk about how the community has to be responsible. Exactly. The community. Right. And so if you're talking, to, when you say that, what I've always heard, and this goes back 20 years, conversations I had with Mayor Menino, you're talking to me because mm -hmm. I'm a mama. Right, right. Who raised her two boys in this city. Right. Okay? Right. With the help of a whole lot of other people, but I'm the primary caretaker. Exactly. You're talking to me, and you're telling me I got to get it together mm -hmm. when nobody knows what I'm doing, nobody knows my life, nobody right. knows if I even know what to do. Right. And by the way, if I, if I was brave enough as a mother to stand up and say I need help, where do I go? Right. Exactly. I know what you suggest because you remember now that the, the city's position has mm -hmm. been for years. And I know this is something I've heard Pastor Wall talk about. If you remember about 10, 15 years ago, they came up with this plan mm -hmm. in response to a whole spate of violence. That if, 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 if parents knew or had suspicion that their kids were involved in something, they should call the police. Mm hmm. Well, that's crazy. I know, because most parents aren't going to, I mean. <laughs> well, more importantly, remember, <laughs> remember we actually had a group of ministers that were going into people's homes with the police. Right, uh, right. For a while. Yeah. The, but the end, really, I don't, I don't want to really come to pick that apart. The bottom line is, it didn't work. Right. So we had so we had to try something the different. They're so not we, calling yeah. the, they're not calling nine one one on their children. Right. And right. so they suffer in silence, obviously, until we see the out you know the, the outcome laying on the street corner in mm -hmm. our community, and nobody wants that. Right. No parent gets up or dreams when they are delivering. Nobody no wants mama, to hear that phone no ring. No mother, no, no mother, when she's birthing the child and mm -hmm. thinks about their life, saying, "I want to raise a killer." Yeah. No mother, you know, I'm hoping my child lives to their twelve. Mm -hmm. No mother thinks like that. Right. No parent parent thinks like that that's right but we have a system that doesn't always support them getting to the really the dreams of their life for their children to grow up right you know strong and healthy and prosperous and so the bottom line and this is so consistent with our our culture you know i talked about this the other night you know even 400 years ago on a plantation we had mothers yeah. who birthed babies and we had the mammies who actually yeah. took care, care of them of because them. Right. people don't always know what, what to, to do. do that's why especially when you're young and you had your child you don't know the the, the instructions don't come with no having a baby come with you the know? package and so um did i have i have a couple of ideas i'm, I'm i don't want to talk about them on the air i want to talk about them in the meeting you know so let's say it right yeah. now our mama's meeting okay is, our is mama's this meeting evening. this evening at 6 p.m that's right at the dcr it's the cast melanie cast, cast facility on martin luther king boulevard mm -hmm. right behind the shell the shellbourne center people right. know if you turn the corner off washington street that's the building right, right. there with the swimming pool in right so everybody people should try to come out i don't know if that we should bring our children if you if, have to. If you have to. If I mean, you don't it's going to be, be a yeah. kind of conversation that you might not even not want them to hear. Because it's going to be real. Like I said, no press. We're mm -hmm. going to shut that door. And there's going to be some crying, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, and there's going to yeah. be some laughing. There'll be some hugging. And yeah. there's going to be some real honest conversation. But that's what we need to have. Absolutely. I think we need to have a real conversation. We as black people, we have issues and we have problems among ourselves, right. with our own selves. Right. You know? Right. I get mad at you because you say something. You get mad at me because I say something. We don't speak for weeks. <laughs> that don't make no kind of sense. That's well, stupidity. You, you heard me say that. I don't know if you heard me say that no. the other night. Well, uh, one, uh, one of the things I, I, that I said is that the, the concept for this meeting for, for, for meetings and mothers from our community didn't just get born in this last week. Right. It was two years ago I started the dialogue. And even then, Priscilla, you know why we didn't have it? Mm. Because 
the individual, some of the individual women that I spoke to said, if so-and-so is coming in the room, I'm not coming. Right. And that needs to stop. That's the problem. We need to cut that out. Well, because, I'm saying. Because. It, when them, hey. cause when the, when the mother people get together, you know, the white people and stuff, they don't care if they don't like each other, <laughs> but they come in that you room. You did hear what yeah. I said the other night. No, I wasn't there. That's, that's exact, <laughs> listen, we turn. I said you turn on the TV every day mm -hmm. and look at uh, white people who don't like each other right. do business. That's right. That's right. And so we have to. We <laughs> right? have to. That's we how have it to, works. We have to change our mindset. We have to really come together, and I believe that we can do it. So I've heard some yeah. people come up with some ideas that I think are phenomenal, and other people say, "Oh no, I'm." not going to do that we're not going to do that don't have but to. i think it's time for us to do it right or, and, well, and we so, will talk about so that's it. the concept so the, it's called i called our mama's meeting right for the sisters let's talk you know let our sisters need support if you lost a child or are losing a child right to the right, street right to and the then, grave and we also to the system the, also you need to come system. yeah because we have to look at not only the parent that is losing their child, but the other parent who's going to lose her child because That's her right. child is a perpetrator, That's right. you know? That's right. And so I know for a fact that a lot of our, 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 our mothers, single mothers, have to work two and three jobs. They say, I wish, listen. <laughs> three hours here, two hours there. You know, you can't even decide whether you're going you gonna to go to school to check on your child right. or either you're going to stay there to keep your job. And, and, and it's not trying to make excuses for people. No, and I just want to no, say this It's too. reality, See, though, I'm, Diane. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking the fact that the city or the mayor, when things happen, that they have a plan. I'm mm -hmm. not knocking that. I, I really am but not. But they really don't have I'm a saying, plan. I'm saying, we, but we don't have one. They don't have and one either. And theirs doesn't work. <laughs> right. No, they have one. It just doesn't work. Oh, you know okay, what I mean? It's, okay. it, it's not working. So so I want everybody to be clear because, oh, you're know, bashing this, this, the mayor. The mayor's, the mayor, I consider the mayor a friend of mine. Don't just be clear mm -hmm. on that. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I expect him to have all the answers. And by the way, I had that same conversation with the city councilors, the female city councilors who buy, who have been helpful in the planning, but mm -hmm. we bash them too. Yep, what are they going to yep, do? What are they yep, going to do? Yep. They're not supposed to be the ones to fix this. That's now, right. I do think they have a job. Exactly. Their job is to make sure that they facilitate the folks who do have an idea and a plan. Their job is to make sure that the appropriate resources for execution of a plan, but be clear, their job is not to come up with a plan. They don't know either. Exactly. I want to say good morning to Coco Bright, who's who's listening, and Tanya Wesley White, who's listening, and Savina June, um, my almost sister-in-law, Savina June Ma. Let me tell you, almost all those names that you <laughs> yeah, mentioned, uh -huh. Coco first. She yeah. called. She uh -huh. said, well, what, what can I do? I'm, well, on, be there. I'm on Facebook right. Live. <laughs> right. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But she, she called. You yes, know, and that's yes. what's happening. But I will tell you the other thing that's happening, uh, Priscilla, which is really what made me know, this time we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. After the young man was killed in Dudley and then later uh, last week in the same day we had the, mm -hmm. the, the, the killing in, in Grove Hall, we, women looking for help that's right. started inboxing some of us on facebook mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have a 12 and a 14 year old and i need help what what what, I, what can i do right and i realized there is no place that i could say oh call so and so right i know there are resources out there mm -hmm. i know that there are organizations yep, uh, yep. out there who profess to be about mm -hmm. dealing with Talk our about it our Talk boys about it. Yep, yep i know that there are young men some mm -hmm. of the street workers and even the women mm -hmm. who I know who right. are on that street. And I wrote about them in right. Facebook. Some, you know, people don't like it. I, I, right. I know that they're ministers who right. really are in the, in the street. And the thing that we have to stop being so critical, I don't like the way they do it, but at least they're doing something. Exactly. So my position is unless you tell me if you're going to have a community meeting or you call in the community leaders, unless some people that I know are on that street or in the room, I'm not going to think it's legitimate. Right, right. Otherwise, it's just some people who think they're important who are right. having a conversation. But it's but see that because I because some of the uh, some of the people there I I didn't know but I heard what they said I heard them talking about Orchard Park I come from Orchard Park mm -hmm. okay and proud of it Heath Street Mission Hill Academy Homes all these different projects and stuff you know and 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 I never got a chance to ask my question which was you brothers that know the people right couldn't you bring the, the the some of them in and i you may have to do it separately and then bring them together like jamal crawford you know i mean these are the type of brothers that should be out here working with these other gang bangers because they know what to say to them they know how to approach them right. you know and so these are some of some of uh, doesn't other that things. just make sense 
Why and why has been so difficult for us to get to that point or why there's always so much resistance or why people feel like you're a traitor if you say, well, he's not the person who I think is best qualified. Isn't that the whole point every day? If you go into war, you want the generals, right? That's right. Who That's you right. want the generals. You don't want the president's daughter or son in law. <laughs> you want the generals. You want somebody right. who has some military experience. Exactly. You want people who you know can go and talk the language. That's right. The That's language right. of the people that you're trying to reach. That's and there's right. nothing there's nothing wrong with with that and right. and, and, and if, if we believe and I believe that we have the not only that we know that this is what we need to do but the energy is here now and I don't think this this is something yeah. that City Hall is going to be able to stop they're not um, we have a caller good morning caller you're on the air good morning this is Jamal Crawford Hello? <laughs> I can't hear your ears you. burning Who's that, Jamal? Your, your ears burning okay, I got absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know just yesterday I went to a, a meeting uh, which is dubbed the Social Justice Task Force meeting with the BPD. Um, and in attendance, uh, Larry Mays, um, uh, Lisa Holmes, who now runs the uh, BPD training program, the commissioner, um, uh, Gross was there, um, 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 Darnell, uh, uh, Mark Scott, um, um, Jackie Rivers, others. In any event, uh, I brought this very thing up yesterday. Now, what I suggested is this. I have given up on the thing of telling them, yo, you got to stop meeting with this one or that one. I've right. given up on that. Right. What, I'm, what I've now suggested is, look, create two silos. Okay? So you do your whole rigmarole like you've been doing with the collective assembled, but then create another group. So that that way, you can have advice from two sources and then weigh out the merits of each. Now... What happened to me recently on Humboldt, as y'all know, Humboldt has been kicking up. Uh, a lot of these kids around here, literally, I have watched them since they've been in Pampers. Now they 16, 17, 18, up to 20, 25, 26 years old. A lot of them I know their older brothers or their fathers or their uncles or their mamas or whatever. I just had a conversation with a couple of these cats who I really like out here. I've seen them. I see how they move. And I really like these young men. They're not just animals and dogs and all this type of stuff right they got brains they got aspirations they love people people love them um and i talked to these brothers and i'm like yo what would it take to really stop this this is madness bro what would it take to stop this these brothers one of them lifted up his shirt and showed me i don't know six or seven stab wounds mm. and was like well this is what they did to me and my brother is dead mm. Okay? So he's like, I don't really, yeah, it ain't no squash. No squash. Okay? The other kid is like, yeah, man, I can't see. He lifts up his shirt and shows me five bullet holes. Jesus. Oh. And, and tells me how his little brother is paralyzed right now from the neck down. Mm, so mm, mm. I know me at 46. I don't have the emotional maturity. If somebody did something to my daughter, oh, you're dying. You're up off this planet. Mm. So I know I don't have the emotional maturity to take an L like that, to take that hit, and then have somebody come to me with the peace talk. So I get it, but I don't have an answer for it. I really don't. I really don't. And these are two young gentlemen who got good sense, you know, uh, jobs and, you know, girlfriends. And they're not just crash test dummies out here just, you know, roaming the streets looking for somebody to murder. These are good kids. Mm -hmm. But they've been through so much. And how do you tell them, That's right. yo, Forget all that. Mm -hmm. Let's squash this. Yeah. And, and also, too, with the other group of kids, Humboldt gets a lot of bad rap for the shootings around here, as if these kids shoot themselves. Right. When there's a shooting on Humboldt, it's not the Humboldt kids that did it. Mm. It's the kids who came here looking for the Humboldt kids. Right. Okay, from other places. And so even if I got the Humboldt cats to chill out, so now they say, okay, we're not going to shoot anybody. We're not going to carry guns. We're going to be choir boys from now on. Cool. How do I stop them now from being targets for the rest of the city? Right. Mm -hmm. right. It still is like, no, nah, I'm still killing Pookie. So, mm. so Jamal, I'm going to speak to the first part of what you said um, about the, the, the kind of res the, you becoming resigned to the fact that or suggesting that they keep doing what they're doing on one track and we create another <clears> track. <throat> Um, we don't we don't have two different sets of diplomats going to Israel. You you know what I mean? Absolutely. So 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 
I think what I heard on Monday, what I've been hearing all week and since last week, which is so encouraging to me, which is why I'm sitting here this morning and why I have kind of dove, dove into this, 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 this issue, this stuff right now is because I believe that there is a new level of energy in which people have decided you don't get to pick anymore. Mm -hmm. You just can't. It's, yep. it's past, it, you can't. We are, we are talking. We will, we will tell you what we need. Right. We will tell you who, should, who you should be talking to. That doesn't mean you can't ever call uh, uh, Mark Scott again. But just what it means is that if, in fact, you are serious and we're going to hold you to your comments that you say you're serious about doing something to resolve and change this climate of violence, then you're going to have to talk to Jamal, Big Mike, Jaquiel, you know, Beefy Cousin, whoever, you, you know, the, the, the long list of names of the people who, who are, Antonio, the people who the kids are actually even able to talk to because right. first you have to there's a reason we you know when I, I keep making the analogies because it's just that simple when the woman came from russia she brought she brought a translator you got to have somebody in the room that's who right. can speak the same language that's as you right. that's and right. and and that's not who um they tend to call mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. you know that you know that. And what we're saying is we can't afford to play this dance anymore That's because right. the bodies are lining up. That's right. So That's right. You, you all, this is not going to be fixed downtown on the fifth floor. It's not. It's not. Mm -mm. It's going to be those folks who you know, who I know, you know, who are, who are able to go around that corner on call so-and-so at night. And mm -hmm. they're even from every level. They're ministers who are in that position, yep, yep. like it or not. Yep. We get so bogged down as I, in the, I don't like them, that mm -hmm. we miss the opportunity. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about my grandson. It's about your, your grand, grandchild yet born. Right. What, kind of, what kind of environment do you want them to be in? And, and, if, and if you know what it is, what are you prepared to do to make that happen? And, and so for me, I'm not, I am not accommodating this nonsense. I can't. I can't because I have grandsons. I have a 17-year-old. I have an 18, an 8-year-old grandson. I want them to be able to get on the bus from my house at, at, at Washington Street in Cedar and go to Dudley. That's right. And me not have to worry about it or have to rearrange. We got people around across our community completely rearranging their lives That's right, the around. way they travel. Exactly. That's right. That's right. You can't go yep. here. Yep. You can't go there. I'm I'm like I said, I have a nephew working in Dudley. We have had I'm, I can't even tell you the conversations in the family about how we get him from up the street. This yeah. is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And it sense. doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to him in the same way that you said I don't know what to say, but guess what? I believe there are people who do know what to say. That's right. And we have That's a right. whole lot more credibility than the teams that we've been putting in front of them. That's right. And why is this only a police issue? That's right. That's right. It's not. It's, it's public safety. It's public health. It's public education. It's yes. human services. It's, it's, it's all that. And so it's time for us as mothers and, and, the and aunties and, and grandmamas and cousins and aunties, mm -hmm. cousins to come <laughs> together and just ha hash it out. I'm quite sure that we have a lot of different ideas that we can put together and we can say, OK, enough is enough. Here is our list of demands. We expect you to do them mm -hmm. because it's, it's just time out. When I, whenever, so as I was saying when you was on your way here, um, Senator, that we got a call last week, Pastor Bruce Wall and I, that Grace Richardson's son had been shot the yeah. same day as the Ashmont fire. Yeah. And we went down to the hospital. We prayed with them. And her son was brain dead. They buried him on Monday. Know. You know, and so Zakia, the, her post on Facebook about being there with a 14 year old. I mean, that is traumatizing. Of course, you our hear? community uh, across yes, the board. Yes, and nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the services that are needed. I don't even know where Courtney Gray is. God bless him. I don't know if they just, he just, I don't know what happened. Somebody got his job. Huh? He got moved and somebody got his job. It doesn't make any sense. He should have been training and, I mean, he should have had a whole department of people because the now, stuff yeah, that yeah, he. What I said. Somebody got his job. Who got his job? I don't know who got his job, you know? Mark Scott. What? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, that's um, horrible. I just want to say this and then we'll let y'all go. 
Right? <laughs> we forgot you was on the line. Right, right, right. <laughs> Look, I don't know, say that we go. So sometimes when I get locked out of these conversations, I have to remind the mayor or the commissioner or whatnot, all, everybody knows me. And if I don't feel like I'm in, with my, as big as my mouth is, certainly ain't shy, none of this, and if I feel like I don't got no in, then how disenfranchised do you feel like other people feel? Yeah, okay? Yeah. And I'm locked out of conversations where my activism and the way my life is, I am uniquely set up. So, you know, we talk about drugs. You know, I used to smoke crack. You know what I mean? Sell it. All that. So, you know, we talk about guns. I used to bust them. And I've been shot. So both sides of the coin there. We talk about jail. I ain't never did no big time, but I did county time. You know? And, and, and so little things like a lot of these conversations I'm part of, and I'm trying to tell the commissioner and this and that. Da, da, da. We're talking about violence. You won't even listen to an activist that you already know who has been shot. Mm. That's why I I'm saying it's not about. real, and yeah. we're getting ready to make it real. We should, because uh, when the when the yeah. mothers decide, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. You know who are we kidding? You know how it works. You know that there's some sisters that are gonna come in that room. We are gonna shut that door. And we gonna mm -hmm. and I, I know what I'm gonna say mm -hmm. to them because yep. I because I'm one. Yep. Come on, yep. I know what was under the mattress. Yep. I know what's in the closet. I know what's in the shoebox. Why? Because I look. I used to tear that room up all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And the question, but the point is, as Jamal said, was saying, see, if I if I saw something, mm -hmm. I I had an incredible network of brothers mm -hmm. I could Did call, call for different yes, things. Yes. And Jamal knows I mm -hmm. I could call those brothers about Jamal because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he was in that group. You know what I mean? Right. I know exactly what you're I, saying. Uh, Diane. But you know what? If what what if you don't? Right. Well, if you don't have no one to call, you don't know who to call, or you afraid to call. Are you who afraid you to yes, call? Yes. Yes. I I see. We got to put our arms around those sisters, hug them, and say, yep. "Sister, come yep. on, yep. come on. Yep. How how did how, what do we need? What do you need? What do we need to do? Because hear anybody tell it? We spend millions and millions and tens of millions of dollars every year on at risk youth, right? Right. Right. Well, doing what is exactly. the question? Exactly. Exactly. That's that's <laughs> that's my question i'm telling you um ha, um being a partner in a non-profit we go to business conferences and we see i see all these white folks up there bidding for these for these dollars supposed to be doing work in our community and i'm like if you all are doing so much work in our community first of all i don't know you second of all why are things the same or even worse you we, know we gonna challenge the status quo like it's not been challenged I'm not saying never been challenged because mm -hmm. it has been. Yeah. Mothers turned this place out yeah. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when they went up in Grove Hall and took over the welfare office, which is now Mother Caroline Academy. Mm -hmm. People forget the history. Yeah. And part yeah. of it is on us. Right. They forget the history, the history or they don't know the history right. or they come from another city and they just think they can. That, and that's a problem, too. But that's another so, story. So we're excited about it. Mm -hmm. And not because it's going to be fun. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be not. fun. But what I. Because it's going to be tears shed. There's going to be some screaming and of some course. yelling you know i unfortunately didn't well I, maybe it was a good thing both of my sons died very young my mm. four-year-old son got killed in the fire and my seven-year-old son got killed in the car accident so i didn't have to experience this but i always say a mother's loss is a mother's loss i don't okay. care what happens well, how your child I don't, goes it doesn't you know? matter how it happened yes and it doesn't so, matter how it happened in terms of uh, and i'm saying not to be cavalier about it but i'm saying in terms of our need to have you with us right, you know right. because the point is we have a role there's a role that we are given by god right. you know as mothers that no one else can no one else can do it right. it's the we're the only ones who that's can right. do this that's right and that's so right. but we like you said doesn't come with instructions mm -hmm. don't always know caller. how um good morning call you're on the air good morning uh, ladies good morning senator good and morning good morning, uh, uh, good morning. Minister Brent Banks. <laughs> you forgot my name uh, player <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah um, i'm definitely enjoying the conversation and looking forward to us uh going further with this and i just want to say that uh as much as we talk about what we're going through and the pains that we see, we also have to talk about, you know, I, I'm, I'm more interested right now in what we're going to do. And, you know, we don't have a lot of time. We really don't have a lot of time. Time is, a, is of the essence here mm -hmm. in Boston. Nevertheless, um, I just want to talk about something that a lot of people know about and have been hearing about, but, you know, haven't got the kind of respect and 
support that uh, could be uh, could help. I mean, in, in, it's, it's not the end all to be all, but the People's Academy, which is uh, put together by, uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Uh, T. Michael. T. Michael, exactly. And what I just want to say to everyone is, right now, T. Michael, although he's been struggling to try to put this class together, we are now have a class of 10 people that we are beginning, we are training now uh, for the, the industry to put uh, to work. Um, and they, they, people range from um, 18 young, 18 to 30, 35. And these are people from the recovery community and some people just from our community. And I just would like to say it would be wonderful when we talk about supporting things and liking things. So I'm going to tell you, Mike, T. Michael has been a pain in the neck to a lot of people. And a lot of people don't like what he do or how his, his approach. But I'm saying um, now that we in this forgiving kind of mode, and we can continue to get the support for his for this. This is just one thing in our community, and it's actually something concrete that we can say works in our community. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, it's just this is something I just like. I'm no. proud to be a part of, and proud to move forward. And we're looking forward to this. And I echo uh, my brother Jamal's feelings about defending his his daughter. I mean, and being angry, I mean, you know, being defensive. But I went through that. When my son was killed in Ashmont Station, my first response was to get the person that was involved, okay? But because of my faith and because of my family and because of the support I got from my family, I decided not to do so. And, you know, Brother Lowe been in the streets for a long time. I got oodles of calls from people telling me, Brother Lowe, we're going to take care of him. We're going to take care of him. I mean, I had to tell people, no, that's not mm -hmm. the direction I want to go in. Mm -hmm. I said, brother, mm -hmm. and to re not too recently, I still got a call because people know who it is. And I know who it is because they were caught and they were incarcerated. But they wanted to, they still want to get to him. But I'm saying to people now, that's not the direction I want to go yeah. in. And yeah. I had to sort of swallow that. But I'm going to get off and continue listening to you. And I'm, I welcome you. What it is we're trying to do. So I thank uh, Brother Lowe for the the, um, the the comment about T. Michael and, and the uh, the People's Academy and even the real the reality of what people are dealing with. But I, I want to say this that the um, ultimate goal of the um, mothers' meeting this evening is to do what I think you were talking about. We need an inventory of available resources what is out there what's there mm -hmm. and i will tell you i've had conversation with the um city council city council president michelle Wu, who many people may know is past due very pregnant mm -hmm. and said if i'm still pregnant i'll be there at the meeting and okay. and if not then i'll have my staff and i said well i actually hope you're not there because that means you're going to be six days overdue right, right. but and 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 counselor andrea campbell her staff has been really helpful this week in terms of getting us to the to tonight um, mm -hmm. Natanja Craig, you know, people, mm -hmm. the names people yeah. know, yeah. Boston yeah. Foundation. Yeah. She actually stepped up in 2015 and said, let me know what you need us to do. She, right. of course, did it again, yeah. you know, th and for this week. And she just lost her child of to course. cancer, you know, right. so right. It's, it hurts. And it so, hurts. It, so what, this, so what oh, we've asked we of the call. counselors, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, counselor, what we've asked of the city counselors is that they help us pull together the resource list because I know that that would be the natural first task for them and a place to go they're going to get information that we right. may not be able to exactly. get exactly so. exactly i think we have another caller caller good morning good good morning sisters how y'all doing good, good morning, morning terrence how you doing i'm doing great doing great you know this is a, a topic that me and a couple of um, gentlemen in mission hill um have been talking about and we're going to start we're going to do we we're trying to put together uh um some other um, young men to come aboard with us but mm -hmm. I've been saying this for years, you know. We, over here in Michigan, you know, we can talk to our kids. Our kids come to us. Our kids, you know, talk to us about what's going on, about who they're feuding with, and so on and so on. You know, they want to live. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like Jamal said, that, you know, we can talk to them. And this is exactly what they said. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you know, y'all you know, y'all can talk to us and tell us to stop. But yes. who's going to tell them yes. to stop shooting at mm -hmm. us? Mm -hmm. You know, 
And I've been trying to find gentlemen who who can relate to the other kids in their neighborhoods and sit down and talk to them and say, okay, you know what? You know, I remember uh, growing up where, you know, our, our mentors brought all of us into a van. Nobody knew where they was going. Everybody was searched. Nobody knew where they was going. <laughs> and took us somewhere and took another group, the same group that we were shooting with, to the same place and said, okay, now we're all in the same room. What's going on? Mm-hmm. You know, you have no chance to, to pay your, you know, your man, say, yeah, meet us over here. Nobody knew where we was at. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need. I had this conversation years ago with a counselor who I'm not going to say his name. But at the time, it was Menino that was in office, and Counselor Mike Ross was the counselor for the Mission Main side. Mm-hmm. And Commissioner Davis. We brought all our kids who were out there and sat with them. And these young men said, if this one person comes to us and tell us, you know, that he can help us, that he can, you know, we, you know, we, you know, he can do this and he can try to do that. We would think about putting our, our, our stuff down. Now, nobody told these young men, you know, to ask for this person. And I went to this person. I told him that they asked for you. They personally asked for you. Mm-hmm. They want you to be at this meeting. They want you to be a part of this meeting. Mm. And I told him, I said, listen, those are your soldiers who will help you with every, anything that you need. Mm-hmm. Because if you grab the young, the youth, then you grab the parents. That's if right. you grab the parents, you grab the grandparents. Because now you're doing something to change the atmosphere within the community. Brother Karen, when, it's, it's, when it's, that it's thing one, one thing that you said, though, but I guess slightly different with, you know, I think we have to communicate with our uh, our youth. I mean, more than you may wait on government or uh, them to do what, so. Because one of the most effective ways of doing that I, I is when you, Antonio, when Antonio came yeah, in Brother in Lord, our community yeah. and he he yeah, gathered the, the heads yeah. of a lot of the That's gang members and sat yeah. down and talked. Brother that was one of the most effective. Means of stopping. Hello. Are you still there? Are you still Hello? there? Yes. Uh, I'm here. Oh, okay, okay, keep going. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, that's what I'm about to see. But see, uh, you know what? Let me finish my story. All right. <laughs> because you know, when this meeting came up, the gentleman never showed up, mm. and. You know, and, and that hurt the kids because it's like, okay, when you want our vote, you say that you do this and you'll do that, but you don't show up. Mm. But see, we turned it around and said, okay, you know what? It's not up on that person. We have to change it. Me and a couple other gentlemen, we've been trying to reach out to other, you know, gang members and leaders of those gangs and people who have, you know, those gang leaders is and people who we know lives in those areas who, who we grew up with. They say, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? We have to put a stop to this. Everybody want to do a basketball league. Everybody want to do mm-hmm. football. Mm-hmm. They say, okay, you know what? This is how we can change, you know, you know, um, you know um, our kids' lives. Well, you know what? That's only a percent or one percent of that. Mm-hmm. Because if they can't feel safe going on the basketball court to play ball or the football field to play football, then you're not going to change their life. Yeah. Yeah, that's and so true. And then when you have adults <laughs> doing the same thing who are encouraging them and, they, and, and the kids are seeing it, then that's something that needs to be changed too. Because everybody is not a coach. A coach is just not a person who put a, a bunch of kids together and say, okay, you know what, go out here, you know, and win. That's not who a coach is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a coach, if you're going to be in that person's life, then you know what? You're taking the place of that parent, uh, you know, of that mother and father who they put their kids in, in, in your hands for those couple of hours that you have them. 
to instill something that they can go back and, and, and live in life and say, okay, you know what, I'm, I appreciate what Coach so-and-so did for me because he also helped change you know, um, the path of my life. He also was like a, a father to me, a mother to me. That's, you know, that's where you reach at. But see, everybody's always worried about, okay, you know what, you know, they, they want the best kids to play. They want this. You know, they throw away the kids that are trouble mm-hmm. kids. But those are the kids who really need our help. That's right. That's so true, Terrence. So I'm tired of, and I ask people, I'm tired of people talking about, okay, you know what, the mayor, the city council, the police department. Well, you know what? Those are your kids. Those are our kids. That, those are your neighborhoods. So if you can't come together and say, okay, you know what, listen, before we got, you know, yep. kill my child who I raised and who I brought into this world, this is what we're going to do. Mm. You know, bottom line, you know, and as if about it. Mm. You know, we can't keep saying, okay, you know what, it takes a village to raise a child when our village is, is, is dead. Our village has, has to rise up. Everybody can't keep talking about that mighty dollar. Everybody can't keep talking about, okay, you know what, having meetings. Okay, you know what, let's stop having meetings, uh, uh, you know, about the, with the grown folks and let's have a meeting, you know, um, with the young folks. <laughs> and then you'll, then you'll see the mindset that they have. Mm-hmm. And Brother Jamal was right. You know, you know how many times young men come to me, you know, and just say, listen, okay, I, you know, I got shot here, or oh, oh, so and so got shot, or oh, this person got shot. You know, we know who it is. You know, just like that, that killing down Delhi. Mm-hmm. Look who brought the child to the killing. So, Terrence. So, Terrence, I don't think anybody would disagree with what you said. My my take on on this is just my take. I said my observation, I should say, is that what happens is that we it's almost like an automatic reaction to us. Something happens in a community, and people feel helpless. They look around. They don't see um, a kind of response that they think. So they start doing their own thing. And what we what we have now is people around every corner who have stepped out and started in, in, in doing no, doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. Now, Carlos Enriquez, you know, has been very, very, very successful in just doing activities that mm-hmm. get communities together. Right. People say kickball right. and laugh, yep. but the rally yep. is the yep. whole families are coming. Yep. Darren Howe stepped out and said, let me pull the meeting together. And that, and mm-hmm. I talked with him. He got discouraged. Mm-hmm. He was told, don't bother. Who are you? Mm-hmm. I said, do, do it. That's do, right. Like, do, That's do right. It. That's right. And, it's, and, and so even for this tonight, if you look on the flyer, it says host everybody. That's right. Because I have no desire mm-hmm. to create another organization. I know. That's my, right. Please. My concern is, <laughs> Is that I know that there are organizations out there already, like you talked about, mm-hmm. um, the 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 information, the energy, the process that the Lewis Brown Peace Institute, you know, mm-hmm. what they go through. Tina right away, she responded. Yep. She responded in 15. She responded this week. Some of the other folks who put themselves out mm-hmm. is having organizations that service, even to service mothers. We haven't heard right. from them yet. Exactly. And I'm saying, exactly. like, again, when you talk about being honest, I'm gonna, just going to speak truth. That's right. That's I'm not right. trying to replace you. I want you to do what you're supposed to do exactly what you getting paid to do what you're getting <laughs> dollars for but you know what i'm um, terrence well but tonight so tonight we're gonna uh, we're gonna be at this meeting and, and like i said i have a couple of ideas someone gave me a very good idea We've that we should have did we'll talk about yep, yeah that we should have did a couple years ago but some folks said no we can't do that we can't do that but we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it this year and it, and when, when when it's done they're going to realize that we're no longer playing with the city of Boston. Right. And I just want to go back for a minute about T. Michael Thomas. I was at a meeting with the mayor and T. Michael Thomas and Makaji. And the mayor told T. Michael, if you get a business plan, I'll help you with the, with the People's Academy. Okay, I heard it with my own ears. T. Michael went and got the business plan, and he is still trying to get space. So, Ma, do you need to own up to what you said? Because I was there. I heard you. You and John Barrows and your other gentlemen. We have another caller. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. The BG Report. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Good. Thank you for all your support. No problem. Um, Praying for you, Grace. Yeah. Um, I'm not even gonna ask you how you feeling. I, I I appreciate you listening and calling in. Well, God told me to look up and 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 um, your show. I know you said you was on in the morning, so I was riding. I said, well, let me see what she uh, if I can get it. So I, I did. Thank you for 
um, having this service, uh, taking your time out to uh, connect with the community. But um, I just been listening, and uh, you know, my son was shot and killed uh, on Ashmore Street on his way to work. So he worked at the airport. He was 20 years old. You know, my youngest son. Uh, and uh, I don't want to mark or meet with anyone or nothing like that, but um, I want to send a warning out to the youth because I believe people are being paid to kill our children for their organs. Mm. Uh, when I, could, I was called to that Boston Medical Center and uh, had my son not in the operating room or anything, just in a, a room, and he's on machine, heart is going, breathe, I guess he's breathing, but they tell me my son is only breathing, his heart's only working because the machine is making him breathe. But then they said, oh, they think he's brain dead, so I said, well, what are you doing for my son? Are you giving him any painkillers? No, they don't think he, they don't think he can feel nothing. I said, well, how do you know? And then, uh, they don't know. Um, I got to that hospital at 12 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, they said he was going to do a test. They think he's brain dead. But nobody did anything for my son the whole entire time I was there. What they did do is come in the room and hound me for my son's organ. They want his heart. They want his lungs. Mm. They want his kidneys. Mm. They want all this stuff. One after another, everyone who came in there went, oh, uh, to donate, you know, to donate my son's organs. Mm -hmm. They just cared about donating my son's, me donating my son's organs, you know. So I told them, I said, well, you know what, um, how much are you going to charge the families for these organs? They're like, oh, they don't get charged nothing. It's an insurance company. So I said, well, what about, I have four, I have four or five family members that need a kidney. Can I donate to my family? Mm -hmm. They said, oh, well, they got to be on a list. You got to be on a mat. Mm. But that was on a Wednesday, 4 o'clock. They gave my son a, a test. They come and tell me, they say, oh, he's brain dead. But he's still, the vital things are still going. So I left. I had to leave Thursday morning. I told him I'd be right back. So they said, oh, well, uh, what do you want us to do if his heart stops? So I'm just looking at him. I was like, well, all day yesterday, you're telling me his heart ain't beating. Y'all, the machine's got his heart, you know, beating. So, that is to say, I like to warn the black youth. I know a lot of people who have lost their sons at 21, 20, and 21 years of age. And uh, I believe our youth are being targeted for their organs. I'm going to say it. And I like to warn the youth. You know, I talked to my son, my nieces, and my nephew when they're out on the street. They had those earphones, headphones in. Mm. They can't hear nothing. Mm -hmm. They can't hear people coming up on them. But That's we true. must, as an elder, as an elder, we must put our community on high alert. That's true. You, uh, you, you, uh, it would be an injustice if we sit up here and, 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 and allow our children to go, first of all, there's a war on the street. We didn't declare the war, but this is a war that is going on. We are walking outside unarmed. We have people in our neighborhood who are, who are armed. Some people may be paying people, paying people to shoot our children. We don't know, but it's time for us to protect our children. I'm sorry. That's true. We, we are, the, the police, Okay, that's fine, but we need to protect our children, okay? So we have men and women who enlist, who go into armed services, they go way over there overseas to go protect someone's interest. Mm -hmm. So we need to enlist men and women to come protect our neighborhood, and we need to pay them. So we need to raise $100,000, $200,000, and we need our own people's security. We need our people's security for our youth. 
We mm-hmm. need our people's security for the elderly, the elderly who's living in these buildings and they're breaking in their homes and stealing their money and stealing all this stuff. But we need protection. We cannot kid ourselves. We need protection. This is not going to, as you know, it's not going on just in Boston. But right. in every major city. And right. we are losing our children, our casualties. We have lost more children in the right. inner city war than any war that's being fight fought anywhere right now. That's so true. Grace, I hate to have to cut you off, but we're up against Thank the we're up Thank against you. the radio. But I will be okay. here for another hour if you want to call us back after nine o'clock, okay? And I, and thank you so much. All right, honey. Bye bye. Oh. You know, she, Dr. Umar Johnson talked about that also. He said that people were being Oh, Dr. Umar Johnson said that people were being young folks were being killed for their organs. And you, why all of a sudden is there all of a sudden, and they're young, you know, and you got, you got a lot of people that are dying from kidney failure and, and liver failure and all these different End things, of our broadcast you know, day on so, um, WBPG LP 102.9 FM radio. We are located at 670 Washington Street in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Our zip code is 021.